McKinney against Pankowski. Pankowski guarding him closely. They get it to Norris Williams on the right side. Norris Williams back out to Dino DeVita to McKinney. McKinney at five foot nine has the ball, dishes to uh, Damon Key. Damon Key, pull up jumper. He hits it over Kevin Rankin. Damon Key pulls up at the free throw line, fakes once, then he goes over Rankin for a shot. Key has 20, Rankin has 22. We're under three minutes to go. It's 42 to 40. Minkowski, left-hand dribble, bounce pass into the corner. Herzog overlays it to Rankin, who lays it up and in. He has a little lob pass to Kevin Rankin, who got the pass away from uh, David Key, and he has an easy layup. It is 42. 42. Pennings and Milwaukee Marquette, a great one at the arena. Norris Williams has the ball on the right side. He looks, thinks about shooting. Nine dribbles to the right. He hands it off to Jason Allen. They get it to McKinney on the left side. Back out to Damon Key. Out around the three-point arc. Kevin Rankin stays inside the lane. He's guarding him, though. Norris Williams, pull-up jumper, free-throw line. Rattles around. Looks like it's going. It doesn't go. We have a foul. It's clear out on Damon Key. That'll be four on Damon Key. Gary Denny and Kevin Rankin appear to have position. Damon Key went in there with his big body, and he cleared out with his left elbow. The official on the baseline calls it. It's a one-and-one -one situation for the Pierre Abbott Pennings, and more importantly, it'll be the fourth personal against Damon Key. Kevin Rankin, I believe, has three. The scoreboard doesn't keep us up to date on that, but I have him for three. I wouldn't be surprised, although we've seen it all day long, to see uh, Bob LaViolet set up place to keep feeding it into Rankin and see if they can draw a foul on Damon Key. Jason Allen also has four. Allen's going to take a break. They're leaving Key in with 2.18 to go in regulation. We're tied at 42. Benkowski, Tom Benkowski is at the line. He was called uh, as the player who was fouled by Key. Benkowski, his shot is on its way, a one and one. He hits the first, and he has the lead. Make a note with 218. Damon Key picks up his fourth personal foul. We saw McIlvain for Racine St. Catharines foul out in last night's game. Right around this point with two minutes to go. Minkowski second is on its way. It's good. Pennings up by two. Minkowski sinks a pair of free throws. We're 215. It is another great ball game for the Pierre Abbott Pennings. They struggled and beat Milwaukee Lutheran. They beat Racine St. Catharines with five seconds to go last night. They have a two-point lead with two. Larkin drives left side. He's by Rankin, but a foul on Kevin Rankin. That'll be his fourth. He penetrated down the left side. Kevin Rankin went out. He didn't just stuff the ball. He stuffed Kevin Larkin. It is the third on Kevin Rankin. All right. So Kevin Rankin had one less foul than I had him for. He is in no foul trouble as of yet. Slides into it a little bit now at three, but there's 2.02 to go in regulation. Kevin Larkin at the line for Milwaukee Marquette. His shot is good. It makes it a one-point ball game. Well, last night, Pennings fans were hyperventilating down the stretch as Gary Denny had to sink a one-and-one one with five seconds to go to give Pennings a one-point lead, and then they had to hold on as two attempts by St. Catharines missed. Larkin hits the second for Pennings to advance. Welcome to Saturday's edition. It's stolen on the inbound by Larkin. Denny's pass was stolen. Milwaukee Marquette has it. Larkin in the left corner. Gets it back out to McKinney. Denny's pass was stolen by Larkin, who is guarding him. Milwaukee Marquette has the ball with a minute 50 to go. We're tied. They try to get into Damon Key, but a foul on Kevin Rankin. Kevin Rankin is fronting Damon Key, and he caught up with the uh, left arm as he blocked the pass with his right. So both big men have four personals. Kevin Rankin has picked up two quick fouls in about 15 seconds. Two quick fouls on Kevin Rankin. He has 24 points. Damon Key from Milwaukee Marquette has 20 points and four personal fouls. Darren Rankin comes in. Greg Cornett goes out. It'll be an inbound situation. It's only the fourth personal against, uh, fourth team foul, rather, against the Pure Abbott Pennings. 44 all. They look inside to get it to Key. They just get it into Norris Williams before the five-second violation is called. McKinney looks to the bench to get a play call. A minute 40 to go. A minute 40 to go. We're tied at 44 apiece. McKinney penetrates the free throw line. Dishes out to Kevin Larkin. Bounce pass to Key. Key. Drop step. Turn around jumper. Hits it. Damon Key. Posts up. Left side of the lane. Little drop step with his right. He frees himself and he scores at 46-42. Key hits a two-point free field goal. It's a two-point lead. Minkowski slides. Gets away with a travel call. They drop it down. Right blocks. Darren Rankin puts up a shot. It is altered. Out of bounds. Milwaukee Marquette saves it. No, he was on the line when he stole to save the ball. Dino DeVita went down to the court to try to save the ball and knock it in bounds. His body was on the line as he went down. 
Binkowski got away with a travel. Binkowski got away with a travel that time. He was penetrating hard left side as he put the brakes on. He slid. No violation call. We're at a minute 14 to go. 46-44. Rankin and Key. The stories of this game. Rankin with 24. Key with 22. Both guys have four personal fouls. Inbounding is Herzog. Gets it to Denny on the right side. Back out. Straight away from the basket is Benkowski from 23 feet. Benkowski, hard right hand dribble. Gets it to Denny. Denny looks inside. Lob pass. Kevin Rankin gets a perfect pass. He lays it up and in. Oh, man. Gary Denny couldn't have handed it to Kevin Rankin better. He tossed it, lobbed it in about 15 feet to Kevin Rankin where he was the only guy to get it. And he's able to touch it into the basket. Ties it up at 46. We're under a minute to go. 50 seconds to go. 46 apiece. With the championship on the line. Working, working patiently is Milwaukee Marquette. Damon Key out around the three-point arc. Left-hand dribble. Hands it off to Kevin Larkin. Larkin looks inside. They get it to Dino DeVita on the right side. DeVita looks between his legs. He brings it back out. Marquette almost throws it away. Norris Williams not ready for the pass. He picks it up, though. Kevin Larkin with it. We're down to 25. Larkin looks inside. Puts the ball on his hip. He waves it off. He says, I'm not ready to pass it to you yet. Dribbles the right side. Tries to get it in. Jared Rankin all over him. They get it to McKinney. McKinney has it. 15 seconds to go. McKinney down the right baseline. Larkin looks for Key. Kevin Rankin it's all over. He drives into the paint. Puts up a shot. Underhand. Whoa. 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 We have a foul. It's a charge. It is a charge. Kevin Larkin went in there and he charges. And I don't know who's going to the line. Man, oh man. Ten seconds to go. The Penning fans are going nuts. The Marquette fans are going nuts. Reactions are somewhat the same, but different reasons. Time out for Penning. Larkin trying to get the ball in to Damon Key. Darren Rankin's on top of him. Kevin Rankin's on top of Key. They won't let the pass go. Well, Kevin Larkin then drives in, into the paint, and he barrels into a Pennings play. I don't know who's going to the line for Pennings, if anybody. Could be a player control foul. We'll have to wait and see what the official ruling is on this. Oh, man. <laughs> the guys uh, from the area media who were down here for the Racine St. Catharines game last night, we sat around afterwards, and we talked about what a heartbreaker and heart stopper that was, a heartbreaker for Racine St. Catharines, a heart stopper for all concerned as the Pure Abbott Pennings won on field free throws by Gary Denny. And then we had to sit back and wait as Racine St. Catherine missed on a 15-footer and a tip-in that we found out a half hour later would not have counted, hung on the basket precariously, just like in the movies when you can count the pebbles on the ball and uh, it didn't go. Well, today we get a charging call on a Milwaukee Marquette player and uh, Pennings will inbound from underneath their own basket. Ten seconds to go. Man, Pennings is going to remember this tournament. It is the final year to Pierre Abbott Pennings. They come into this ball game at 24 and 2. Milwaukee Marquette is 24 and 1. Kevin Rankin has 26. Damon Key has 22. Milwaukee Marquette is not going to pressure the ball. There is down to eight seconds. Denny with the ball. Bounce pass over to Herzog. Pull up three-pointer. It's dropped the back of the iron. Gary Denny chasing it down. We're down to two seconds. Denny off balance. Jumper is no good. We're going to overtime. We're going to overtime. Joe Herzog comes down. He fires it up with about five seconds to go. He was just inside the NBA three-pointer, which is uh, somewhere around 23 and a half, 23 nine. It hits hard off the back iron. Gary Denny was able to chase it down on the left wing. He fired it up from about 25 feet, and he misses it short. Well, Pennings goes down. They fired up long. When you put up a three-pointer, you have a chance to get an offensive rebound. If it doesn't count, Pennings did get that offensive rebound, but Denny was unable to chase it down. So we are going to go. We are going to go into overtime. Three-minute overtime. Four, four uh, timeouts remain for Milwaukee Marquette. Pennings has only one. I have to admit, I'm somewhat vague on the rules here. If teams get any extra time off in the overtime, so we'll just keep an eye on the uh, scoreboard above us, see if anything happens here. Kevin Rankin, 26 points. Darren Rankin, 8. Benkowski with 4. Herzog, Denny, and Cornette, Raider. They all have 2. Damon Key has 22. Norris Williams has 12. Dean Kamuchi has 2. Kevin Larkin, 3. Dino DeVita, 2. Kim McKinney, 4. Four personal fouls against Kevin Rankin. Four personal fouls against Damon Key. Well, Milwaukee Marquette and DeVere Abbott Pennings will remember this game a long time. He gets the uh, toss. Norris Williams gets it, and he lays it up and in. They got the free the uh, halftime toss. They tipped it down to Norris Williams. was able to go one-on-one -on -one against Binkowski. It was a physical mismatch in favor of Milwaukee Marquette. He was able to put it over Binkowski. Norris Williams has 14. Milwaukee Marquette has gone zone for the first time in this ball game. Marquette has gone zone. They're going to collapse down on Kevin and Darren Rankin. Pennings works it around the perimeter. Herzog in the right corner. Back out to uh, Benkowski. Two and a half to go. 
was stolen away by Kevin Larkin. Kevin Larkin stole it for Milwaukee Marquette. He filled the passing lane. Bukowski tried to get it to Herzog. Picked off by Larkin. We're at 220. A two-point lead for Marquette. We are at overtime. With the ball on the right side. Norris Williams. He gets it to Dino DeVito over to Tim McKinney. McKinney has it for Marquette. Damon Key, 20 feet away from the basket. He looks inside, nothing going. Norris Williams has it now. Norris Williams has come around. He has 14 points in this ball game. First two in this overtime to give Marquette the lead. We're down to two minutes. McKinney with the ball. Marquette patient. They're going to make Penix steal the ball. They're going to work the clock right now. And Penix comes out. The man-to-man -man defense comes out higher. Larkin with it. Larkin looks. He gets it to uh, Norris Williams. Norris Williams over to Larkin. The reason no Penix player went to the line. Out of bounds. They fed it into Damon Key. He was unable to control the pass. It's out of bounds. The reason there were no free throws on that charge is a player control foul. In spite of the fact Penix was in the bonus, a player control foul on the offense. No free throws. Penix got the ball. Had 10 seconds to move it length of the court. They get it to Denny on the left side. Denny brings it back out to Binkowski. Binkowski has the ball. We're under 90 seconds to go. Denny with the ball above the three-point arc over the zone. Herzog can't control the pass. It's through his hand. Herzog got the pass, and he was going to go down left, down the right baseline, and he started making his move to the baseline before he was able to put the ball away. Went right through his hand. 46-46. Make it 48. 48-46. A minute 22 to go in the first overtime. Let's take a 30-second timeout if we have one back in the studio. A 30-second timeout on WDUZ. point deficit in the first half. They were down by 11 at the start of the second half after Penning scored a basket. They were able to grab the lead at 42-40. Penning's grabbed a 44-42 lead. Back and forth a little bit. 46-44 for Marquette. 46 all for Penning's. Uh, 46 all after Penning scored. It is now 48-46. Norris Williams got a breakaway basket on the toss to start the second half. Penning picks up some pressure on Milwaukee Marquette. It's Herzog and Pukowski applying the pressure. DeVita brings it up for Marquette. Crosses the timeline. Herzog picks him up again at the timeline. They get it to Norris Williams. Gary Denny's all over him. Left hand dribble. He hands it off to McKinney. McKinney straight away from the basket. McKinney has the ball. He gets Kevin Larkin on the left side. Larkin brings it back out high. Straight away from the basket, 20 feet away. Hands it off to McKinney. McKinney plays Williams. They're running a weave out high here. We're down to 50 seconds to go. 50 seconds to go in the overtime. Milwaukee Marquette has a two-point lead. Damon Key, 22 feet away from the basket. We're down to 45. Milwaukee Marquette has the ball and a two-point lead. He puts it on his hip. Kevin Larkin has it. It's a five-second violation. Kevin Larkin put the ball on his hip. He lost track. Kevin Larkin did not administer the offense and a big turnover. A gutsy call by the official is a correct call because he's standing on the three-point circle and he put the ball on his hip and he's going to wait. Pennings had the pressure on him. It's a key turnover. Kevin Larkin for Milwaukee Marquette. See if Pennings can do anything here. They're scoreless in the overtime. 30 seconds to go. They're facing the zone. They haven't had a shot yet in this overtime. They've turned it over twice. Denny with the ball on the left wing. They have the Rankin brothers inside. There's down on them. Uh, Denny puts up a wild shot off the backboard. It wasn't the best shot. It was a, almost a desperation shot. We're down to 15 seconds to go. It's a foul on Darren Rankin. A foul on Darren Rankin with 15 seconds to go. Gary Denny had the ball on the left wing, and he tried a little jackknife jumper, put it up way too hard. Uh, the Milwaukee Marquette has gone into his zone defense here in the overtime, and they're packing three guys in when the ball gets on the wing against Darren and Kevin Rankin. Darren and Kevin Rankin have yet to touch the ball in this overtime. Kevin Larkin is at the line. If he can hit a couple of free throws, he'll remove the uh, possibility of goal court. Larkin's shot is on its way. No good. Kevin Rankin clears the board, knocked out of bounds by Damon Key. Boy, what a... <laughs> Damon Key went over Rankin's back, knocked it out of bounds. Could have had a fifth foul call against Damon Key, but he got all ball. Well, Kevin Larkin made a huge mistake for Milwaukee Marquette with about 45 seconds to go. Marquette was going to run the clock. 
Kevin Larkin from Milwaukee Marquette, put the ball on his hip. He was standing just outside the three-point arc, put the ball on his hip, did not make any effort to move the ball or, or uh, institute any kind of offense. The officials counted off five, blow the whistle, five-second violation, and Penix had the ball, but they didn't get a good shot. Then he banged it off the back of the uh, backboard, didn't even catch any iron. So we're down to 14 seconds to go. Milwaukee Marquette scored the first basket and only basket of overtime. When uh, Damon Keel won the toss, he was able to tip it down into the offensive end. Norris Williams picked it up, and he only had Benkowski back, and he was able to shoot over Benkowski to score the, the field goal and make it a 48-46 ball game. That's the score right now. Kevin Rankin, 26. Kevin Rankin, 26 points. Damon Key, 22 points. Both big men have four personals, but neither Darren Rankin nor Kevin Rankin have touched the ball in this overtime. We are down to 14 seconds to go. Milwaukee Marquette slipped back into a 2-3 zone. They put their three big guys on the baseline, and as soon as the ball gets over on the wing, they collapse on both Darren and Kevin Rankin, and they can't get the ball into them. So it'll be up to Denny, Binkowski, and Herzog to make some offense. Penix gets the ball under their own basket. We're down to 10 seconds to go. Penix down by two, nine, eight. Denny with the ball, looks inside. Benkowski with it. Benkowski over to Herzog. A three-pointer left wing jumper. Good! He hit it! He hit it! Time out! Milwaukee Marquette call. Time out with a second to go. Man, what was that? 23 feet? Man, that was NBA three-point distance. Go!
coaching. Damon Key. Manager Evan Saucer. Now to receive the 1990 Whistle State. What a great ball game. Absolutely uh, one to talk about. We'll talk about it here for years to come. Well, it's the kind of game that will forever send a chills up the spine of area basketball fans. The Pierre Abbott Pennings, going for his last hurrah in its final year of existence, made it a storybook ending at the state finals in Milwaukee. Facing top-ranked Milwaukee Marquette, what a game this one was. Early on, Kevin Rankin down low, hits the jump shot. It was 18-7 to to Pierre Abbott Pennings up on top of the start of the second quarter. Marquette came back. They're ranked number one in the, in the state. Norris Williams with the drive as it went up by nine at halftime. Pennings still in control of this one. Kevin Rankin with 26 points in the ball game. A nice speed down low. He played well. He'll play for Northwestern next year. And then later on, game getting tight. Kevin Larkin drives, misses the shot. They could have won it. Instead, Pennings has another shot. They missed it. Both teams struggling, trying to control this one as this one went to overtime. In the overtime, Penning scored the first basket. Milwaukee Marquette had a chance to win it right there. He couldn't hit the free throws. Watch this Joe Herzog from the three-point land with three seconds left. That's the game winner, Abbott Pennings. He had missed his first 10 shots. Abbott Pennings wins his first state title in his 35-year history. DePierre Pennings is the state champions of basketball tonight.
We've done this basically for all the people who never had the, you know, the chance to win it before. We were doing this for all Pennings alumnus and all people who ever worked at Pennings, and we really wanted it this year, and we got it. We played over our heads a little bit. Just an unbelievable win for us, and, and it's great. Uh, it's a great win for us. And the Squires are the state champions of basketball. Their first state title in the history of the school comes in its last year. The pier upsets Milwaukee Marquette by a point in overtime. Now the Squires enduring a nail-biter in the semifinals only to encounter another heart-stopper in the title game. Pennings and Milwaukee Marquette battling for the Class A crown. Second half highlights Damon Keyes doing damage down low. 12 of his 21 coming after the break. But of course the Squires counter with Kevin Rankin his final game in green and white. It's one to remember, 26 points for the big guy. Overtime we go. Norris Williams scores the first basket in the extra session. That's all the scoring there is until this one. Joe Herzog, is he a hero or a goat? He's a hero. The Squires are champions the final 49-48 in OT. It's nice. It's nice. No one thought we could do it, and we pulled it off. We knew we could do it. We designed the play to either get, up to, get it to Kevin for the two-pointer, or if they sucked in on him, we had Joe on the outside, and that's what ended up happening. And we won with the three instead of the two for the tie. And, uh, you know, we took what they gave us, and Joe was able to uh, come through with it. So for the first time since 1957, for the sixth time overall, and for the final time, the Abbott Penning Squires are WISA Class A champions, the final again, 49-48. Now it's my information that the first Squire boat is ashore. The players and coaches aren't home yet, but Vice Principal Jim Ottinger is standing by live out at the high school. Jim, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. In your own words, sir, please describe the final moments of that ball game. Oh, it was utterly fantastic. Uh, Herzog just came down and out uh, in the corner there and just threw one up and in she went. Fantastic. You describe what this means to the school. Everyone knows now it's the final chapter, but for all the alums, for yourself, what does it mean? Oh, man, this is utterly, uh, I, I, I'm at a loss for words. Uh, we came so close so many times. And uh, <laughs> we, we finally made it. Man, uh, this is a, a really a nice way to go out, really. Beautiful. Perhaps for the people who want to enjoy the celebration with yourself, what, what do we have planned? What's going to happen for the kids? Obviously, the team is still on the way back, but what, are, what ceremonies might we have in the future, in the days to come? Uh, we're planning on having a... a uh, a get together with uh, the parents and the the players up on uh, on Monday. Uh, things are kind of scattered this evening, but uh, on Monday uh, we'll be getting together in the auditorium. So anybody that's around, uh, come on right in. Well, Jim, all you uh, all the fans, a big hearty congratulations. Please extend them to the team for us as well. You betcha. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. All right. Wow. Basketball fans in the state of Wisconsin were in a state of shock when Lamont Weaver put up the shot that had helped Beloit eventually beat Nina in the title in the late 70s. History may have repeated itself last night in Milwaukee when Pennings beat Marquette. Tim Hunt says it's right out of the movie Hoosiers. <laughs> the last shot ever taken by an Abbott Pennings player was without a doubt the biggest and most memorable shot in the school's history. Joe Herzog's three-pointer with one second left in overtime last night gave the Squires a 49-48 win over Milwaukee Marquette and their first ever state title. Today, Pinnings coach Bob LaViolet was still marveling at what his team accomplished. I don't know, it's, it's rather strange of how it all came about and, you know, the ending itself. Yeah, I guess, you know, maybe we got a little bit of help from upstairs. <laughs> The one question remaining is, what will happen to the trophy when Pinnings closes this year? Nobody knows, but for now it's in safe hands. Starters Kevin and Darren Rankin haven't let it out of their sight. You're not going to feel this sensation that you feel now again. You're never going to be able to achieve this. And this is just an unbelievable type of feeling. You know, it's an unbelievable opportunity. We're talking about how if you wrote a book, you, you couldn't write it like this good. I mean, you know, you, you couldn't write a story this way. Well. It's just it's so weird the way everything's falling into place for us this year. It's been so much fun. This was the first day of practice for the Squires this year, but even then, in early November, their destiny was taking shape. Well, coach said that we're supposed to make this, we're supposed to go out with a bang. It's hard to imagine a bigger bang. 
in the Bible it says the last shall be first. So maybe here at this Catholic school it's fitting that the last class is the first to win a state basketball championship. Tim Hunt, Action 2 Sports, to Pierre. The whole thing, it just, it is too okay. hard to believe. Well, if you missed it, you shouldn't have. De Pere Abbott Pennings <laughs> and their state championship will never walk this way again. Closing his doors at the end of the school year, the Squires saved their best performance for last, and what a performance it was. Taking on a favored Milwaukee Marquette team, the Squires' Kevin Rankin came through with 26 points last night. But the night's hero had to be senior Joe Herzog, who actually missed on his first 10 shots from the field last night. But remember the miss because he connected when it counted the most late in the ball game. Rankin converted on a nice pass inside to tie, tie things up at 48-all. Pennings and Marquette went to overtime, still tied at that score. The Hilltoppers had a two-point lead late in OT when Kevin Larkin missed a potential game-winning free throw. That left Pennings with 14 seconds and a final shot. So enter Herzog, the senior guard who had missed all those shots earlier, didn't even hesitate. Herzog for three, got it. What a moment it was as Pennings upsets Milwaukee Marquette to win the Class A WUSA state title. What a night it was as the Pennings wins by a score of 49 to 48 in overtime. planning on uh, getting in an overload situation and either going inside to Kevin or outside to Joe on that side or cross court to Gary and crisscross Kevin to the opposite box. So we were either going to go for the two or win it with the three and it just so happened that they sucked in and Joe was left with the three. It, it means a lot right now because it, cause we, we just won the state championship. That's all I can really think about is it's an unbelievable feeling. It's an unbelievable feeling. Kevin Roper reports school and community spirit still running high. This is the shot heard round Wisconsin and netted the Squires a state title and had students and fans going bananas. That was on Saturday. Today, all of De Pere is in a state of controlled delirium. People still talking about it at places like the Main Street Restaurant. You're the salesman. Joe Secor and Pete Fleck are a couple of regulars here at the restaurant. It's good to see them go out and win something and show the people that, you know, they're closing the school down and they're still out there and giving it everything they got. Signs popped up all over town outside banks and flower shops and, of course, outside the high school 